Welcome back, everybody, to part three of my Unity VR guide. Today, we'll be going over how to use Unity's action input system, how to get values from our controllers, how to animate our hands, and how to connect those values from our controllers to our hand animations. If you haven't been following this series, no worries. Just download the GitHub project provided below, open up the project, and go to the corresponding scene to follow along. If you like a written tutorial, you can also find one in a link below as well. Opening up the project and navigating to the right scene, which is gonna be this part three, inputs and hand animations, you can see I haven't added too much to it. We have this ball here that is gonna be set to instantaneous and is a grab interactable. And then we also have this object called input reader with an input reader script that we're gonna use a little later. To kick things off, we're gonna cover Unity's input action system. They added this system back in 2018 and it's kind of become the standard for VR development in Unity. Now to showcase why it's become the standard and to better understand how the system works, we're gonna implement a pseudo movement system ourselves. So I'm gonna go over here, right click, go to create and input actions. And I'm just gonna name this practice. Give it a double click to open it up and now we have this action map now as a quick aside i'm going to suggest that you click auto save here uh, i've worked with action maps quite a bit and i have exited many times without saving my progress and then you have to do it all again with that out of the way let's say we were implementing a easy movement system right wasd and arrow keys how would we do that using action maps well, first we'd start by clicking this plus sign that adds the action map. We can just name this default, but any name will do. And then we have actions over here. And the idea behind actions is we can set up singular actions and have multiple different bindings to them. So for this one, you know, we're creating a, a simple move system, move. And these actions have action types associated with them. And these are the values that we're going to be looking for with this action. So this one's set to button, but if we're doing movement, we're going to want a value. And for control type, we're going to want to come down here, vector two. And so now that we have that, we can go into bindings. And this binding isn't quite what we're looking for. They actually supply a very nice one for movement called add up, down, left, right composite. And you can see here, we'll have all the bindings set up ready to go. So I'm gonna name this WASD. And to show you how to bind these, you can go over here to path and you can click through everything. But you know what's easier is just looking it up. There it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the rest of these. And here comes the cool part about this input system. We can actually add another up, down, left, right composite, and we can call this arrow key. And I'm going to go ahead and fill these out. And just like that, we have a move system ready to go. It uses WASD and arrow keys as inputs. And all we'd have to do is write a script that checks this and looks for when any of these events happen. But we're trying to do VR. And so how would we do this with VR? And Luckily, since we use the XR Interaction Toolkit, we already have a action map set out for us in Samples, XR Interaction Toolkit 2.0, Default, and here it is, the XRI Default Input Actions. Double click that and open it up. And it's good that this is already set up because there are a lot of things that we need to map out if we didn't have this. Going through this really quickly, we have three action maps. We have a head mounted display, a left hand and a right hand, and then all the actions associated with them. So selects, you have turns and yeah, just looking at these two important ones, select and activate. If you ever wanted to change the buttons associated with it, you could just come in here and then you go to XR controller. Uh, this is on the right hand and then optional controls. And then you'll find all the buttons that you're looking for there. And if we wanted to check out the values while they're being tracked live to make sure things are wired correctly, you just go up to window analysis and XR interaction debugger. And when we press play, you're actually gonna see this screen fill up with a bunch of different values being tracked right now. 
So we understand the input system better and we see it's generating values, but how do we use those values in our VR projects? Uh, one thing I want to mention is you need to always make sure you have an input action manager and you have the input system that you have set up set in action assets. If you don't have that, if you're trying to troubleshoot, it might be this missing from your project. And to better understand how we get these values, I've created this little object here, input reader, with the input reader script. And we're gonna go over that script right now. So what we need to do is get values from input devices, right? Our left and right controllers. And we do that by first getting the input devices and then reading from them. So starting off up here using unity engine.xr, this is gonna give us access to a class called input device. And come down here, I have a list called input devices and I'm gonna store all our input devices in here later. In the start function, I have something called initialize input reader, and that's just the little function over here. It's gonna come in here, it's gonna call the class input devices dot get devices, and then I'm passing in that list from before. And so this is gonna populate this list with any input devices that it finds. And then for each of these, I'm just gonna print out a name and then a characteristic. And you'll notice here at the very bottom in the update function, which is called every frame, uh, that I'm seeing if the count is less than two. And that's because we're looking for three input devices. And when you start up a VR project, both controllers might not be registering or active. Uh, you know, sometimes players just use it one controller at a time. So it's always good to check for that. And it just tries to reinitialize if it's less than two. All right, and if we come back into the project, you can see that if we press play, that it is going to register both my head mounted display and my two Oculus Touch controllers, which is what we're looking for. So now we've tracked down our devices, now we need to start targeting specific devices and printing out the values so we can use the values later. And to do that, we need to use a different function call. And I am going to copy and paste this. I'm gonna comment this out and then I will explain input devices dot get devices with characteristics. So what this is going to take is a input device characteristic it is going to look for it and then it's gonna populate it in our list from before. And so right here, I do input device dot characteristics dot write and I also look for input device dot characteristics controller. So I'm looking for a write controller. It is going to take that and then we have to take the value out of it. So if it finds that controller, I am going to come in here and copy and paste and comment this one out. And so this says input devices, try get feature value. And so I have it looking for a common usage dot trigger. So it's looking for the trigger value, which should return a float and then the output is going to go to this float called trigger value. I'm gonna print the name and the value that it's giving. All right, and so when I press the play button and I hit the trigger button, you'll notice that it is recording it and printing it out. So we have these values printing out and that's great, but it'd be nicer if we connected them to something. And so I've set up this kind of practice problem where we can animate hands and then connect the hand animations to the values that we're getting from the grip and the trigger buttons. And so if you come over here, you'll see that I've taken some uh, hand models from the Oculus integration that you can find on the Unity store page. And I've taken out specific things that I want us to work with. So here I have a left hand prefab and a right hand. And I've actually already done the animation controller and the animations for the left hand, but I've left the right hand blank because I wanna go through how to do this. And so to animate it, first we need an animator, and then we need an animation controller, and we need to make some animations. So in order to do that, we're going to pop open some windows. And if these aren't already open, you just go to window animation, and then you have the animator window. Boom, here that is. And then we also have the animation window. And you're going to find that right over here. So to get started with the animation, I'm going to navigate back to the scene. And then I'm going to double click this to open up the right hand prefab and make sure I have the right hand selected. And I'm going to hit create clip and I'm going to name this right hand default. And so this is going to be the default position our hand is in. And we need to make sure we have that recorded. So to get this done, it's going to be a little tedious. I'm going to speed through this. 
you hit this record button and we need its initial position to be everything that it's in now. But in order to get that, we actually have to change all these little tiny rotations that are gonna be the different joints in order to record. So I'm going to do that really quick right now. All right, and so with all that done, we don't need to record anymore, so I'm going to click that off. And you'll notice that I have all the rotations here, which is the initial position, and all the rotations here, which is all the little micro uh, changes that I've made. I'm just going to delete those because we don't need them. We just need the recordings here. So we already have all the positions here. Now we have to make two more animations. So the last two animations we need to make are a pinch and a fist. I was playing Demio the other day and well it had the animations in there so I thought why not implement them ourselves. So to do that we're going to create another new clip and we're call this right hand underscore fist. All right, and we're just gonna do the same thing. Hit the record button. We're gonna move this timeline ahead a little bit, and then we're just gonna start rotating all these little fingers. I'm gonna go through that right now. All right, and there we go. That looks good enough. It opens, it closes. But again, we don't really need these first frames we're just gonna want these last frames. So what I'm gonna do here is select all these, copy, I'm gonna move this slider back here, I'm gonna paste them here. And so now it's just a closed fist throughout. I can delete these, don't need them anymore, and we're set for fist. And now we gotta move on to a pinch. So same thing as before, we're gonna come in here, create new clip, right hand, pinch. And I'm actually gonna cheat a little bit, right? So we kind of have already the finger positions for our ring finger through our middle finger. So I'm gonna copy those over and then I'm gonna come back over here into pinch and paste them and uh, move this, there we go. And so now we just have to rotate these in uh, the thumb and the index finger into where we want them. So I'm gonna do that really quick. Uh, just make sure to press record. All right, and just like that, we have our pinch animation, so I'm gonna stop recording. And now all we have to do is hook these all up together in the animator. We use an animator controller, and you'll see it actually generated one here. Well, it's generated two, because I've been doing this tutorial too many times. And I'm just gonna delete this. That's the old one from a previous video I was making. And we're gonna use this one here, which is the one that was most recently generated, right hand controller. And so we open up the animator window here and we can see all the different animations we have here, but we're not gonna use these. We're actually gonna use something called a blend tree. So you right click, create state, and then from new blend tree. And this is what we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna come here and I'm going to oop, make a transition into this. And we're just gonna delete all these guys. Double clicking here, it will open up the blend tree. And in order to use everything that we want, we're going to come up here, going to go to blend type and choose 2D freeform Cartesian. And we are going to need different parameters and we can actually generate some parameters over here. We're going to want some floats because we're going to be using that grip button. And then we're also going to do another float because we're going to want the trigger button. And we don't need this blend, so we can go ahead and delete that. See you later. And coming into here, we just want to make sure that this is set to grip. This is set to trigger. And then we are going to add a motion field. And we're going to add four of them for our four different states that we could possibly be in. And the four different states that we're going to be in are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So this would signify, you know, coming in here with 0, 0, we're not really, uh, we're not gripping the button, we're not gripping the trigger, so that's going to be our default. And filling out the rest of these, uh, you know, this is our trigger being pulled, and so that's the pinch. And then this is our grip button being used. So we're going to make a fist with that. And this is both of them being used. And I feel like that's also a fist. And if we drag this hand model down here and move this around, you'll actually be able to see all the different animations that it's making. It's pinching, fist, fist, and then open. So it's all set, ready to go. We just need to hook it up in our scripts. 
So in order to hook that up, what we're going to do is first I'm going to keep this organized. I'm going to move all these into my animations folder right here. Oop, there we go. And I am going to come back to the scene. I'm going to back out of this and we're going to look at our left and right hand and we need two new scripts on these. Well, one script on each of them. And I have put it away over here in scripts input hand animations and it's a script called hand that I've already provided and I'm just going to attach this to both my left hand controller and the right hand controller and I'm going to open it up and go over this with you. So going over this uh, again we're using unity engine.xr uh, we have a public game object that's going to reference our hand prefabs because this script's actually going to be spawning our hands. And then we have the public input device characteristics. And so this is going to store the characteristics that we're looking for. So the right hand controller or the left hand controller. And then down here we have a private input device, target device. And so that is going to store the target device that we're looking for if it finds it. And then right here, the private animator, this is just going to be a reference to our animator and coming down here again and start we have initialize hand and so what this will do it'll come in here and it's going to have a list of input devices and we're going to use input devices dot get devices with characteristics again and then we are using this reference up here uh, from the editor of the input devices that we're given and then it will populate this list and if the counts greater than zero that means that it's detected something and so we can take the target device which is going to be the first target device because it should be the only one with that characteristic and we are going to then instantiate our hand prefab and then we're going to get the animator from that hand prefab. And then coming down here, we're going to constantly check and update and see if the target device is valid. Again, you know, when you start up a scene in VR, people don't necessarily always use both controls. That's why we're instantiating the hand later and not instantly when it boots up because they might not even have the controller uh, activated. And so if it isn't valid, this is going to come in and try to reinitialize constantly or else we are going to come in here and just update our hand. If you come in here, you're going to see we use the target device dot try get feature value. And we use this function from the script before to get the trigger value and come in here and you have the hand animator dot set float. And so this is just setting the float of the trigger value within the hand animator. And we just pass in that value here. And then if it doesn't get anything, we're just gonna set it to zero. And you come down here and it does the same thing for the grip values. So with that, the last thing we need to do is wire some things together uh, back in our editor. So we're going to come back over here and we need to make sure since this is going to be instantiating uh, the hand prefabs that we connect this. But not only that, but this before is where we had our instantiation of our hand prefabs. So we're going to set that to none. And then we're going to do the same for the left hand. Come over here, make sure we put that there, and then set that to none. And last, we just need to put in the input device characteristics. And so this is on the left hand, and we are looking for, let's see, left, but we're also looking for a controller. So it's gonna give you a mixed value, and you'll see these two check marks. And we do the same for the right hand. And after that, we should be all done and ready to go. So let's hit this play button and see what we got. And just like that, we can now pinch, we can grip, and we've learned quite a lot in this video. Uh, we learned how to use Unity's action input system better. We learned how to get different devices from it and use those values and how to animate hands. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and I appreciate you stopping by. Take care, bye-bye.